know, in the past few seconds, all of you did something incredibly important without even thinking about it. You filled your lungs with oxygen, right? So since you're going to do it again anyway, let's all breathe together. Two deep breaths. Come on, it's Ted. Everyone, please take a deep breath in and let it out. Take a second breath in, let it out. Great. So that second breath we all just took together, it came from the ocean. The ocean. How's that? Well, we all know that plants on land produce oxygen through photosynthesis, but so do many forms of ocean plankton. These amazing drifters in the ocean crank out a ton of oxygen. How much? More than 50%, more than 50% of the oxygen that we breathe comes from ocean plankton. Every other breath. So why am I talking to you about plankton? I'm, I'm a reporter. Shouldn't I be talking about corruption or exposing wrongdoing or something like that? Well, because I'd also like to talk to you about stories and why it's important to investigate beauty sometimes. And also that powerful thing that happens inside of us when we do our own investigative reporting. You know, we breathe in new ideas, new lessons, including lessons that can help make us better decisions. So I'll begin with a story. I was working on a story about the impacts of rising sea levels in South Carolina, and I bumped into a scientist who had been studying plankton for four decades. I told him, hey, look, I don't know anything about plankton other than he's a character on SpongeBob. <laughs> he said, no worries. Just think of plankton as living stuff that drifts in the ocean, things that can't move too well by themselves, that are at the mercy of the waves and winds and currents, the sea's hitchhikers. Well, by that broad definition, the mysterious world of plankton holds a universe of sea life, everything from microscopic algae, which produces oxygen and looks like it should be in a Dr. Seuss book, to other oxygen producers that make these fantastic shells that look like spaceships. And then other things that are a little higher on the food chain, things that feed on those oxygen producers, things that look like insects, like this creepy dude. He was thought to be the inspiration for the monster in the movie Alien. And then I saw this one, and it was love at first sight. Let's just watch for a second. You know, I was really, I fell in love with that one because it reminded me of an angel floating through space. So I was really struck by the beauty and mystery of these important creatures hiding in the waves. But on the way back to the newsroom that day, we got a phone call because there'd been a shooting. A cop in North Charleston had shot a man named Walter Scott eight times in the back. And then not too long after that, a guy shot and killed nine people at Mother Emanuel Church, not too many breaths away from this room, right? And there were lots of stories after that, stories about racial bias and police shootings, stories about the Confederate flag, stories about gun control, important stories, but under the crush of all that news, I was broken. Hungering for some beauty to heal. And I found my mind drifting back to the beauty of the plankton world, in that image of the angel. So I decided to do an investigative project on plankton. Boss thought I was nuts. Plankton? Shouldn't you be exposing corruption or injustice or something like that? Dug into it anyway. Started reading scientific journals, then talking to researchers from around the world, studying the data, quickly realizing that what we know about the plankton world is relatively new. It's just come to light in the past few decades, and in the past few years, there have been these amazing discoveries. Discoveries that affect every single person on the planet. But these important stories have been lost in the maelstrom of less important stories that so often spin around our daily news cycle, right? So two things became clear. One, uh, I was on to one of the most important stories that hardly anybody's talking about outside of academic circles. What's happening to the ocean plankton, the stuff that produces every other breath. And two, plankton is even cooler than I thought. Kept on stumbling onto these fun facts like the white cliffs of Dover, not made out of white sand or clay, made out of plankton. It's those spaceship shells. They piled up millions of years ago when sea levels were higher, and then when sea levels went down, boom, there they were. The beauty of plankton on display. And chalk is made out of those same spaceship shells. And this beautiful jellyfish actually has the ability to reverse its aging process. It's one of the few things in the world that can do this other than share. Scientists call this the immortal 
jellyfish. And that wonderful smell of the ocean, that salty smell that we enjoy when we go to the beach, it doesn't come from the salt water. It actually comes from decaying plankton. So think of plankton. Next time you take a big, deep breath of ocean air. And beyond, beyond our beaches, beyond our horizons, there are these great galaxies of algae producing oxygen. They're spiraling arms, drifting with the Gulf Stream and other currents. And that without all of these great green galaxies spinning around the globe, our air, our oxygen levels in this room would be as thin as the air is in the highest reaches of the Himalayas. I also learned that these oxygen producers take in enormous amounts of carbon dioxide. But instead of you know, turning that carbon dioxide into wood like trees do, they build these beautiful carbon shells that look like jewels and Christmas ornaments. And when those organisms die, those beautiful shells fall to the bottom of the ocean. It's an avalanche of carbon that once was in the air falling to the seabed, an avalanche that biologists call marine snow. I love that term because that snow piles up year after year, layer upon layer, and over millions of years, those layers compress and turn into oil, which means that every time we step on that gas pedal, we're burning really, really, really old plankton. So something else happened to me as I was doing my research. I suddenly found myself blurting out the words, holy shrimp. I didn't say shrimp. Um, that's because we burn a lot of really, really old plankton, right? Every day, 400 million gallons of gasoline in the United States alone. And what happens is when we burn that gas, we unlock that carbon that the plankton so nicely stored for us millions of years ago in the form of carbon dioxide. And as a result, carbon dioxide is building up at an unprecedented rate. Carbon dioxide traps heat like a greenhouse, and, as, and heat is building up at an unprecedented rate. Heat equivalent to four atomic bombs going off every second. And most of that heat's not going into the air, it's going into the ocean where our oxygen producers live. And holy shrimp. So, also learned that these oxygen producers are tough. They can handle a little bit of warm water, right? But they also need fertilizers, just like plants. And where do they get these nutrients? from the lower, colder ocean depths. Underwater currents deliver them to the surface. But all this heat, four atomic bombs going off every second, is creating an extra warm layer of water on the surface. It's like a big blanket. And it's gumming up the world's ocean conveyor belts. It's currents, including those underwater currents, that deliver those nutrients to our oxygen producers. Without those nu nutrients, those fertilizers, our oxygen producers and the plankton starve. One of the most stunning things I came across in my research was that in the past 50 years, we've seen a 40% drop in one of the most important kinds of oxygen producers in the plankton. A 40% drop in the kind of stuff that produces every other breath. You know, we talk a lot about the rainforest, but why not what's happening in the plankton? Maybe because it's hidden. As I swim around all this information, you know, I begin to feel that weight, right? you know, that crush of news, that crush of uncertainty about the future. But remember, our minds can drift back to the beauty of the plankton and the beauty and the stories of those spaceships and those angels, because it's stories like theirs, I'm convinced, that will save the day. Why stories? Because human beings have always used stories to learn lessons. And the plankton offer us Two lessons of literally breathtaking importance. Number one, we need to stop burning really, really old plankton. We need to stop unlocking that carbon they stored for us a millions of years ago, stop burning fossil fuels. And how do we do this? Well, I don't need to tell you. We're all investigative reporters, right? Now we all have the search engine, the tools at our fingertips, the information to write our own stories, large and small, when we leave this room about how to burn less of that really, really old plankton, fossil fuels. But the second thing the plankton are telling us is that we need to do this now, that we need a sense of urgency. What kind of urgency? <sighs> These angels are telling us the kind of urgency you feel when your very breath depends on it. Thank you.